Good afternoon. I'm very pleased to meet you uh, to the Festival of Hope. My name is Katarina Gombots-Czech and today I will be talking to two Ukrainian authors, Yuri Andruhovich and Natalka Sniadanko. Yuri and Natalka, welcome. Thank you. Hi, hello. Hi. <laughs> Uh, before we begin, I would like to briefly introduce our guests. Uh, Natalka Sniadanko is the author of several novels and a short story collection. Her work has been translated into 11 languages. Among others, she received a Lviv UNESCO City of Literature Award in honor of the city in which she has spent most of her life. She has worked extensively as a journalist and is the translator of over a dozen books from Polish and German to Ukrainian. Yuri Andruhovich is one of the most famous Ukrainian writers. He is an author of several novels, as well as poet, essays, and overall cultural thinker. For his works, he received several important awards and his works were translated in many languages. He is also an accomplished translator of the Beat Generation writers, the New York School Poets, and Shakespeare into Ukrainian. He was born and currently lives in ivano frankivsk in Ukraine. So, my first question is, now I introduced you, but I would like to ask you, how would you describe yourself as a writer? Uh, Natalka, can you please start? How would you describe yourself as a writer? Okay, it's an unusual question. <laughs> Thank you for it. I think um, I, which is most important for me as a writer is um, to do um, just things that, uh, that make me happy, that, uh, that I like to do. I'm not writing um, books uh, because somebody wants it, some publisher or somebody. I'm trying to do it just as a hobby. Um, besides, I'm, I'm doing it uh, for a very long time, but I try to stay um, um, independent and professional um, at the same time. I don't know if uh, it is possible. <laughs> uh, I have this illusion that I, I, I am independent and I can uh, afford to, uh, to do things that I like to do. And um, if I would speak about topics that uh, are important for me, uh, there are um, two, I think, two topics that are most important for me. It is history. Yeah, mostly Ukrainian history in some bright uh, context, um, world context, um, European context, um, written in this context or um, um, seen in, in this context and women's, women boys in, in this history because history and women uh, is, are not together in Ukrainian literature mostly. We have um, different versions of, of history, but um, none of them is written or spoken from the women perspective, uh, women voice, and um, seen history as uh, something not heroical, not uh, pathetical, but uh, some everyday history, uh, which is um, most important for me because it makes it um, a history, not, not just some events that somebody uh, will call important or not, um, take apart from others. And I think that's it. Before I ask the same question, um, Yuri, I would like to ask you another thing, which is like addition to this question, uh, which book of yours would you recommend to a new reader to start with? So for example, if there is someone that doesn't know anything about your writing and this person would ask you, where should I start? What would be your answer? Okay, it uh, depends on the reader because uh, not uh, my books are not available in all languages. <laughs> so sometimes it's just a question of 
the language. Yeah. <laughs> if something is available, you have no choice. Um, it depends on um, somebody who is young or who is older, who uh, prefers some more serious uh, topics or something more light. Um, it is also, um, it depends on the person. Uh, most popular book of me is a um, collection of passions. It's uh, um, in a school program in some uh, countries and it's a, a book for, now it is practically for children, I would say. And, um, but there are some more serious books, of course. And uh, I, I think each writer would prefer the last one or <laughs> the most important one. Um, so now I'm just between two books. One, uh, the last uh, book of me is freshly translated into German. And yesterday it came from, from <laughs> it was printed and uh, very nice uh, cover, and this very nice cover. And so, so I'm happy to see it uh, again after some years. And, uh, I am just now reading the next one in Ukrainian, so in between two uh, two readings, and um, so I can. Um, okay, so thank <laughs> sorry, thank you for uh, this. Um, I mean, congratulations for your this co new copy that came out yesterday. You said uh, so. Now I would ask the same two question to Yuri, please. So can you? <laughs> Uh, well, um, I, I would say about myself, uh, I have, as a writer, I have several um, avatars. Mm -hmm. uh, I started uh, in the 1980s as a poet, and then I uh, uh, grounded uh, together with my two uh, friends poets uh, literary performance group uh, called Booba Boo and since then I, I can also I can add to my uh, to my characteristics uh, that uh, I'm a performing writer so which means uh, I prefer uh, to read my texts aloud it was uh, first of all just poetry, but then I used to uh, to do some uh, uh, some uh, performances, some compositions together with uh, musicians, and uh, so I, I recorded uh, a few uh, CDs with uh, my texts and. Uh, uh, they are designed as uh, uh, musical compositions. And of course, uh, I, I shouldn't forget about my novels. Uh, I uh, recently published uh, the seventh one. Uh, the title is uh, Radio Nietzsche, Radio Night. Uh, so I hope to get in, in uh, uh, in the next years, uh, some translations of this book, uh, as always, uh, first of all, the German one and the Polish one, and uh, probably uh, from from your neighborhood, uh, because I, I just signed my agreement with the uh, Croatian publisher. Uh, so I, I would say, uh, it is an um, acoustic novel. Uh, I, I mean, uh, it sounds uh, like a musical work. Uh, and it, it is the, the point of, uh, of my self-representation. I, I would say uh, I'm an author of, uh, uh, of the text uh, which, uh, which, which can sound which uh, can be a kind of uh, acoustic uh, phenomenon. And um, to your second question, um, I have a very good possibility to, uh, to mention here uh, my second novel written uh, in 92, 
uh, which title is uh, Moscoviada, because uh, it is my uh, most recent book published uh, in Slovenian. Uh, it has been published, uh, I think, 2018, after they published in Slovenian uh, my novel uh, 12, uh, 12 Circles. And uh, so I would recommend to start by Moscoviad, or if you want Moscoviada, this is the original title. And the newest, uh, the newest edition of this book uh, is uh, also quite fresh. It has been published in Israel uh, a few months ago. So the, the newest the translation is into Hebrew language, uh, which is uh, for me a very, a very good uh, news uh, to get my book uh, to get my book in in that uh, very ancient and uh, beautiful and uh, important language it is very nice to hear that things are go on in the world of literature so that we still get new translations new publish published books and that you still sign contract um, contractions since we currently find ourselves in this strange time where we feel that uh, our ability to control our life and our future has been very challenged. Um, and our plans are also uh, tend to change in a very fast pace. Um, and my question is, what were your plans for the future a year ago and how they changed because of pandemic? And how do you perceive this new reality? For example, this also this interview through Zoom um, in terms of being an author, how, how did your work change because of pandemic? Maybe Yuri, can you start? Mm -hmm. Yes, it, it was uh, quite, uh, quite sad, the beginning of this situation. I mean, in March uh, last year, after uh, they introduced this uh, special form of uh, quarantine in different countries. And uh, so I had to, uh, at the end of March, I, I had um, some uh, tournée in, in Germany in, in, and Austria in, uh, with my newest uh, book, Pen. Uh, it has been published in Germany, uh, so the, the, the book premiere uh, was on uh, 19, 19th of March, and it was very sad for me to get the message, they, the publishers and the organizers um, are forced uh, to cancel uh, my tournée with this book. My, my tour. So actually, I had to spend uh, 10 days, maybe two weeks in Germany and Austria traveling and uh, having the readings with uh, uh, my book, uh, Darlings of Justice, uh, Die Lieblinge der Justiz in German. Uh, but I had to stay home. And so I uh, I had to rethink somehow to, to change the plans and it was the main uh, motif, the main motivation for me uh, to come back uh, to the translation. I, I couldn't start, uh, let's say, a new novel because I, I just finished previous one. I wasn't ready to write uh, at that moment some new novel, some new text at all. But uh, I was able to to try to to come back to Shakespeare, and uh, so it it was uh, a longer uh, story uh, where my publisher, the publisher of my uh, previous uh, translations. Uh, the publisher of uh, Hamlet and Romeo and Juliet, he 
uh, wanted me to translate King Lear. And uh, it lasted for a longer time. I denied, uh, I, I didn't find the, uh, the motivation and, uh, and the time, just banally saying I had not time. Uh, I had no time for, for that work. And suddenly, pandemic uh, situation, and you can be happy uh, going back to the translation and working with uh, Shakespeare's uh, maybe uh, most difficult uh, drama, most difficult uh, play. Uh, so I was very happy to finish it uh, eight or nine months later. Mm, and I, I can say it was actually all the time uh, under the sign of, uh, of King Lear. And uh, the other things, of course, uh, are mm, my, my newest plans are uh, to visit uh, Vienna, uh, despite of uh, all this uh, pandemic situation, which is uh, which, which is actually not softer now than uh, it was then. But still, I, I hope to come to Vienna in March and to work there uh, two months. Uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, my new project, yeah, writing something which could be a, a longer essay uh, in a shape of, um, uh, I would say, stream of memory. We know stream of uh, consciousness, but it would be stream of memory about uh, about uh, festival age in Ukrainian culture, something like festival age that we had uh, in 80s and uh, early 90s. So I would try to uh, somehow to reconstruct uh, that situation. And uh, so uh, that's my next plan. But uh, generally, I, 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 I'm too long maybe in my answer, but just uh, uh, I, I would just generalize. Uh, the main idea of, um, of this uh, actually absolutely new condition uh, we are now in is that um, uh, we probably shouldn't plan too much. Our plans seems seem to be uh, always, uh, almost always, somehow destroyed. Uh, we cannot uh, be sure in, in our plans, so we have to be probably uh, more modest uh, with planning and more skeptical uh, about uh, our future possibilities. I agree. Um, what do you think about this, Natalia? Uh, well, um, I really can't complain too much. Uh, of course, I also had uh, some cancelled meetings, uh, readings, and so far and so on. Um, but I was lucky. Um, everything was not just cancelled, but removed. Uh, so this book uh, had to appear uh, last year, but now it has appeared <laughs> finally. So um, I had to go to Vienna to have some readings with this book uh, last year, but I'm going this um, weekend. So I, I hope <laughs> pass the border because two flights was canceled till now. So I hope this one, third one will um, will be okay. Uh, it, it will be my first check uh, to, to go through the border after the, the last year. 
I even had a, a discount from insurance company. <laughs> so they said, you uh, are so often uh, our guests, so we'll, we will remove your <laughs> uh, what you have already paid last year to the next year. So we hope you will enjoy your stay. Um, and uh, I cannot say it has changed something, uh, it has been some big changes for me uh, with this pandemic. So I'm mostly working from home uh, since um, years and years uh, and all my projects are um, uh, remote uh, mostly. So I prefer to, to, to do it this way. So I, um, I hadn't uh, changed my, uh, my daily habits too much. So I, I try to, uh, to do everything online, but online, what is possible. So now uh, it is um, everybody's doing <laughs> everything online. Um, and uh, I enjoy it even um, not to be too much out or to, to have to spend too much time in, uh, in our bad uh, transport infrastructure. And um, so I, I just have more time uh, to write, to translate, uh, to think about new projects and to hope that everything that was removed, uh, remo uh, rem removed to this year will, will happen this year. And um, the last uh, but not least, uh, Yuri, you mentioned uh, Shakespeare translation. Uh, it remembered me of uh, this strange project of literature magazine, uh, Sisday. Uh, do you remember uh, you translated Hamlet, Hamlet uh, 20 years ago? And uh, this published, it was my debut. <laughs> this, uh, right. My first it, it, was, uh, it was the same issue. Right, yeah. of, of <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So with we... your novel and my translation of Hamlet. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it was mm -hmm. the first translation of Hamlet and my first novel. Uh, not everybody <laughs> <laughs> has such an experience. So perhaps uh, we are um, complaining too much now uh, about difficult situation. It was time where no publisher was ready to publish uh, the first translation of Hamlet or some books in Ukrainian. It was really uh, a lucky uh, publisher who, who did this uh, publication. So now we really um, cannot complain much. Books are published, uh, some readings are planned. So we, uh, we hope to to get back to normal soon, as soon as possible. And we will see each other in Vienna. <laughs> so I hope that you both will make it to Vienna. Uh, but I wanted to ask you something about being an Ukrainian author. Uh, my question is maybe a little bit strange, but uh, you both write in Ukrainian language you are Ukrainians. So my question is, what is your, let's say, superpower as a Ukrainian author that differs you from being an author from any other nation? So what is that that makes you different? I would say that among, um, beside language. So is there anything that is special because you are Ukrainian writer? I hope you understand my question. I can help you with answer if you want, but yeah. Natalka, maybe can you start? I think um, we are lucky to have uh, a community because of this difficult situation, really difficult situation, uh, 20 years ago, as Ukrainian became independent and no publisher was ready to publish, publish something in Ukrainian because it was no commercial um, uh, since uh, to, to make it, no commercial purpose to make it. And uh, only some literature magazines, only some readings in public, uh, where possible, uh, uh, Ukrainian authors became a, a community. We are not competitors, we are friends mostly. And uh, I enjoy it very much because I know the situation in other countries is different. Uh, people are not friends, they are competitors. Um, uh, it is lucky and unlucky situation both because um, uh, nobody can uh, really leave, uh, ma make a living from, <laughs> from publishing books in Ukrainian. Uh, so everybody has different jobs to do uh, as, as well, to translate, to perform, to do anything uh, 
which is possible. And uh, it is the um, difficult part, but uh, also it makes it possible that people are not competitive. They are their friends and they enjoy being together and they enjoy uh, reading together. Some A lot of projects uh, happen because of that, uh, because people support each other, because they like to, to do things together. And uh, it is also this uh, phenomenon that uh, a lot of Ukrainian authors are also performers, uh, uh, they perform and they perform also together and it is not uh, some something competitive so i think it is uh, the most interesting and exciting thing for me in, in, in being a part of this community do you agree with that yuri with this um, oh idea? Uh, yes yes i do i do agree uh, with uh, what natalka has said i if I may add um, some things, uh, I would stress um, the situation with, uh, uh, let's say, uh, just, uh, let's call it just uh, uh, the, the view, the view of the future. Uh, I, I think uh, to be Ukrainian writer is. Uh, very and very attractive uh, because uh, there is always uh, a lot to do in the literature. Uh, there are um, such uh, uh, such spaces, such uh, huge uh, holes uh, where nobody uh, as a writer has uh, something told uh, to the readers and uh, so you, you can always uh, discover and open for yourself and for your readers uh, some uh, unique uh, realm, unique world and it is uh, especially a dramatic situation uh, if we realize that we have the country uh, with the, actually with two languages uh, which are dominating, but it is a kind of competition between uh, the those two languages in Ukraine, between uh, Ukrainian and Russian. And Russian language uh, represents, uh, uh, especially in literature, uh, something which is very challenging. I mean, uh, Russian language represented huge, uh, famous and uh, very, very influential uh, Russian literature. So we, as the writers uh, who write in, in Ukrainian, we are fated uh, to take this challenge, to go with this challenge into what we do and to be better than Russian literature is. And I, I think it's the principal point uh, that we win more and more and more readers in Ukraine. We, we make uh, our circle uh, wider and wider. And uh, I, I agree what Natalka called community, but I, I think the word is uh, the moment uh, a little bit uh, too, uh, too, too shy, too modest uh, to call it community. So I, I would speak about uh, future uh, a reading uh, future uh, society of readers uh, in Ukraine, and uh, we, we can can all the time feel and experience this progress. Okay, so since Yuri already had mentioned this topic, Ukrainian language versus Russian language, I would like you to ask as um, authors. Uh, who write in Ukrainian, is 
this language, this to write in Ukrainian, is this um, political decision also, or is something that came natural to you? So because you're, it's the, it's your mother tongue, so you write in Ukrainian. But on the other hand, is there something more? Maybe Yuri, can you start with answering? Yeah, there, there are uh, absolutely different uh, different uh, persons uh, working in Ukrainian literature. In my case, for example, uh, it wasn't a political choice. Uh, it, it was uh, what what you have mentioned. So I mean, uh, the only language uh, which I can uh, call uh, my mother tongue. And uh, it means for me that I'm able to write my best, what I can do, just in, in that only language. <laughs> but I, I know, I personally know, uh, uh, they, they are quite many uh, contemporary Ukrainian authors who came from the families where Russian was this language. They were initially uh, Russian speaking, uh, at least as, as the children in their families. And then uh, they uh, made this uh, choice as a part of some aesthetical platform, but at the same time as a part of uh, political activity. And uh, the, uh, just just to to mention one example, um, we know the writer whose name is uh, Volodymyr Rakhienko. He comes from uh, this most eastern region, Donbas, where uh, we we still have the, the military conflict with Russia there. He is uh, an inner emigrant, so he, he lives now in Kiev, in the capital. Uh, he uh, had to, to abandon his uh, uh, small motherland in 2014, as he was a very successful uh, Ukrainian writer uh, writing in Russian. So uh, two years ago, he published his first novel written in Ukrainian. And his position was, yes, I did. Uh, I did it as a political choice. I, I cannot, he said, I cannot be a soldier. I cannot uh, take part in the war. I, I cannot uh, fight against uh, those uh, aggressors, but uh, my way to do something against them is to uh, to change to, to go to ukrainian language and actually his uh, ukrainian novel uh, called mondegrin is uh, absolutely a unique uh, literary work I, I i would say um, it it was very positive for him for his uh, writer's career uh to to make this jump into uh, other language. That's very interesting. Uh, so, Natalka, what is your opinion on that topic about speaking a language through it's writing? Not very different because I'm from the same part of Ukraine, which is Western part, and here uh, people are uh, Ukrainian speaking mostly, so it was. Uh, it, it was and it is for me also uh, the one language uh, I can write in uh, and it was no choice at all <laughs> in this uh, question but I agree with you is that Ukrainian uh, uh, language and Ukrainian literature especially it was um, all the time it was a political choice um, as uh, Ukraine was a part of uh, Soviet uh, Union. It was a bad political choice because uh, you, uh, uh, everybody had problems who tried to uh, just write Ukrainian uh, or to read something. Uh, it was quite illegal. It was a choice of 
uh, of uh, trying to be nationalist, uh, trying to be in uh, independent. Uh, after that, it was uh, some period of in independent Ukraine where it was also a bad choice. I can remember uh, some um, years where uh, Ukrainian culture, not only literature, was uh, put into some ghetto uh, only for Ukrainian speaking people, which were the minority in Ukraine. And it was absolutely not interesting as uh, commercial products. Um, everybody uh, was told that um, uh, no bestsellers can be translated into Ukrainian before uh, the first Harry Potter translation was uh, very uh, much better as Russian one, and it made it it made it made a breakthrough, and uh, some films uh, were translated uh, into Ukrainian. Some other bestsellers, so people believed um, that it is possible. It is a language that can sound uh, good, um, also in this commercial sphere, and now it is quite normal. Uh, so I. Um, I hope, and it is my big um, um, dream to to live in, in Ukraine, where speaking Ukrainian, writing Ukrainian, reading Ukrainian, uh, doing Ukrainian culture will be not a political choice anymore. I want it to be normal, and I want it to be uh, some some other choice. I prefer Ukrainian book because it is better than other one, but uh, it shouldn't be political uh, because only uh, um, if, uh, on, only when it will be not political anymore, we will, ca we will come to this normality and uh, in, in our country also. But now we have this, to make these political choices and we have to support it also and to stand by uh, and uh, to for example, refusing speaking Russia, which uh, with you, <laughs> which would be more easier for all of us, but it is a political choice, not a language choice in this uh, situation. So um, now we are fighting against this culture expansion of uh, uh, of Russian language, uh, which is not about culture, it is not about literature. So now we are living in this political choices uh, made for us and we hope that more and more Russian speaking uh, Ukrainian authors will switch to, to Ukrainian because it is better for, for them because they, now they have no, uh, no uh, audience in Russian in Ukraine and they have no audience uh, in, in Russia uh, with, with their books and it is set for, 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 each, uh, for each writer and it's not, not a good situation at all. Yeah, so you both are coming from the west of Ukraine, uh, but I have read somewhere that although this part of Ukraine used to be always more Ukraine than Russian uh, in terms of language, in past last years it's becoming still more and more Russian-speaking territory. Is that true, Natalka? Can you tell us something about that? Um, I wouldn't say so because people who uh, spoke Ukrainian, they are speaking Ukrainian now. Uh, we, um, we have more Russian speaking people now because of immigrants from uh, Eastern, from Ukraine. Uh, here in Lviv, we have a lot of people who came uh, to live here to start uh, new lives uh, because of the war. And um, some of them um, are switching to Ukraine, they learn Ukraine, they try to speak Ukrainian. Some of them um, are still speaking Russian, uh, they are understood, and uh, there's no no conflicts on on the, that point, uh, but uh, I agree with you. Yeah, uh, technically speaking, we have more uh, Russian-speaking people, but uh, it is not because of <laughs> switching uh, to to Russian uh, from from uh, people who has to, who used to live here before the war. Yuri, would you like to add something to this? Uh, I. Uh... I think there is uh, th th there is uh, something what changes uh, in other regions too. 
in in uh, in that direction of uh, uh, there is uh, going to be more and more Ukrainian. So we have some kind of uh, diffusive uh, processes in Ukraine. Uh, more people uh, which speak Russian in uh, Western parts and more people uh, who speak Ukrainian in uh, Central and Eastern parts. And uh, if you speak, uh, if we had to um, uh, somehow to, to describe uh, in a very uh, brief way uh, the situation uh, in our country, no, I would say it is a time of uh, real uh, bilingual uh, country. Because we, we always knew that we are bilingual, but, but it wasn't really, uh, it, it wasn't true in a meaning that it was just a domination of Russian and uh, Ukrainian as, as always as the second smaller language, which is uh, not, uh, so to speak, uh, present in, in some region, absolutely. Uh, no presence of Ukrainian, and now we we have the changes, and uh, it is like uh, the situation is quite dynamic, uh, and um, I'm sure that um, uh, the, the total decision of uh, Ukrainian society is actually uh, positive for Ukrainian. So it it is ready. Uh, to uh, to change to accept more and more Ukrainian in its everyday life. Okay, that's very nice to hear, actually. Mm. Uh, so um, Natalia uh, mentioned support that uh, Ukrainian authors have to support each other. My next question is um, something that actually. Uh, it, it's very interesting to me, so I would like you. I would like to, to ask you, as a my interest, how is the support between Ukrainians and uh, people from Belarus um, in, in this um, period of time when there is a big crisis, crisis there? So, how do you, these two nations, let's say that these two nations have the same um, evil mother or something like that? How do you support each other in this uh, period of time? Yuri, maybe can you start? Mm. Uh, mm, uh, of course, uh, we are very, very mm, close to uh, Belarusian uh, neighbors. And of course, we are interested uh, to have there uh, in our neighboring country to have there no dictatorship, to have there some system which uh, would be uh, at least uh, as democratic as uh, our Ukrainian system is. Because, of course, uh, we are very, very far in Ukraine from some uh, political uh, ideal. But uh, we, we uh, can uh, call it uh, absolutely uh, honest uh, that we have democracy. Uh, we have uh, the sixth president already. Uh, and uh, Belarus uh, has uh, the only one all the time. Uh, so there is a huge difference in uh, political culture between us. And um, I'm, I, I'm ready uh, to, to say a lot of uh, uh, supporting words to uh, to our uh, Belarusian friends, uh, but uh, nobody can help them uh, if 
they cannot help themselves. So actually, uh, I'm disappointed by uh, the protests uh, they had in the last year. Uh, because uh, I, I think the mistake was uh, in, the, in the initial idea was to do the protest uh, in, uh, in the way which will be opposite to Ukrainian one. They were very uh, scarce by, by the system in Belarusia, the Ukrainian way means uh, means uh, violence means blood means uh, fire and war but ukrainian way uh, is first of all uh, freedom and ukrainian way means uh, we try every kind of non-violent protest of peaceful protest and uh, we, uh, but but we are always ready to protect ourselves against police, against system, against government, against president. If they start killing us, and we, in Belarus, uh, the government, the state power, killed them, but they didn't answer by. Uh, some radical activities and uh, so i would just say um, I, I don't think i, I don't believe uh, some proclamations or declarations or some uh, even some poems or uh, essays uh, written by us by ukrainians can help uh, our belarusian friends uh, to become freer, to, to, to start fighting for freedom, finally. And so they allowed uh, dictator to, uh, to, to be there on the top of state power too long. It, it is uh, almost 20, no, 30 years long. So it's it's uh, quite uh, quite hopeless. Uh, we are now participants of Festival of Hope, so I'm very sorry for using the word hopeless. But it's just a very important Belarusian lesson for all the nations, for all the countries in, uh, let's say, let's start by Europe. Don't permit uh, your presidents and, or, or uh, your, your uh, state leaders uh, to sit uh, too long time in, in their chairs because uh, they become uh, somehow um, they, they be become too monumental, too cruel, uh, too, too criminal. Uh, so it's um, in my opinion. Yeah, we will return to this uh, hope at the end of our conversation. Uh, Natalia, would you like to add something to this? Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm not so pessimistic about uh, Belarusian and protest and uh, the future, so I, I allow myself to add some positive uh, vibes uh, to this. Some country. hope. <laughs> some hope, yeah. <laughs> Because I think uh, we cannot really compare uh, our situations. Uh, we have a totally different situation in Ukraine and our history of protests, it's much more longer. And uh, we also had different protests, successful, unsuccessful. And it is uh, it doesn't happen once people are going to the streets and uh, they win. Um, no country is, uh, succeed by one protest. So I'm happy. Uh, to see and to realize that uh, Belarus uh, uh, finally uh, 
went to the streets. So it was the first uh, attempt and uh, it is important, uh, at least symbolical to, uh, to the people to know they are capable to protest. And um, I think uh, the another generation will come and uh, they will do it differently because uh, it is always uh, the another generation who has no peer of a dictator, um, no experience of jail, uh, no uh, other fears. Uh, they will succeed sooner or later if they uh, will uh, continue with this protests. And I see uh, uh, our support, uh, our uh, role, um, uh, it, uh, it is a long way um, of uh, cultural contacts between Ukrainian and uh, Belarusian, uh, Belarusian literature uh, authors and writers. Uh, we know each other, we are friends, we, we translate each other. And I think we should continue to, um, uh, to translate, just translate, just publish, uh, some texts, some thoughts, just know uh, it exists, this culture, this independent culture, not everything is only Russian speaking in Belarus, and uh, we, we, it is also not a very common uh, knowledge in Ukraine. So I think it starts by, by the small uh, new projects uh, of, of publishing, of knowing each other, of discussions, of festivals, of readings, and uh, it is a long way, but uh, sooner or later it can be <laughs> successful. <laughs> I don't know if it will be, but it, it can be. Um, I hope. Yeah, it's nice to hear that there is some hope. So, as you mentioned literature, I will now like to uh, return to the, this topic. And there is another question for you, Natalia. Um, when I read an interview about your first novel, um, I read there that it was um, labeled as a, a Ginocchi roman, so as a woman's novel. Um, what do you think about this label, uh, women's writing? How would you comment this? Um, fortunately, it has been uh, huge changes since uh, 20 years ago, as this novel was published it is the first time. Then it was not very uh, common uh, for women to write. Um, some books and even uh, if women uh, wrote some books it was mostly called um, uh, this entertainment literature some uh, popular literature just women literature it is uh, the topic uh, now uh, it is called uh, literature written by women which is um, uh, not the same as women literature. So these popular um, books are still there, they are present, and I'm happy that there are more uh, uh, women doing this because it is uh, very good for, for this commercial part of, um, uh, of um, literature. Uh, but we have also more and more women in, in this series. Uh, uh, so-called serious literature, not not just entertainment, um, and uh, it is uh, it is good because it is sign of time, a sign of new generation, a sign of uh, gender um, ideas that finally came to Ukraine. Uh, difficult and slowly, but still uh, moving forwards. And um, I think uh, we have now. Uh, I, 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 I can be mistaken, but uh, it seems so to me that we uh, even have more women starting in, in um, as, as new voices in, in literature as, as men. It uh, can have uh, different uh, causes and explanations. Perhaps also that literature is something that not very well paid and women <laughs> have to do it. As, everything that it is not very well paid or something which is not very very uh, popular or not very it has no authority in, in, in something serious you, know? uh, you will not 
uh, see many political uh, persons in Ukraine who will uh, say something about books. They will say something about other topics, but books, uh, I should they have. They read books. Um, it, it is. It has not not uh, very. Um, good opinion in, in society, uh, literature as, as, uh, as a topic, um, but um, the good, uh, good news is we have more and more women, uh, young women, or even in all generations who write just more and more, <laughs> translate. Right? Uh, well, at the beginning our, of our conversation, you mentioned that another thing uh, beside history that you wrote the most it's um, these women um, themes and I was wondering whether this um, you know this hashtag me too movement that is spreading around the globe right now is it already present also in Ukrainian literature will it affect it somehow yeah it is present, of course, in social media um, at first, where it started. We have um, a lot of movements uh, against sexism, against um, uh, gender, um, uh, not against, but for gender equality. Um, we have some uh, some some texts, some literature texts about it too, but I think it needs more time. Uh, literature is it's just uh, a, a slowly art and uh, it cannot work, not, cannot compare with, uh, with social media or with, uh, all these topics. Uh, but I'm uh, happy to, to read more and more um, uh, about gender in, in social media, in normal media, so-called normal media. I am happy that uh, in, uh, we have more movements uh, in in our cities. Uh, we have more support for women, uh, and so forth and so on. So gender is not an easy topic in Ukraine. I think we perhaps will not <laughs> touch it here because it is very uh, very long and very uh, different story. But uh, if we are speaking about literature, uh, we, um, we are lucky to have a situation that is improving, definitely improving. And um, for 10 years, uh, it was only several women uh, writing um, books and publishing books. Uh, now we have uh, much more and uh, it is uh, the most important thing. Now I would like to ask also Yuri uh, something that I have uh, read in one interview with the young Ukrainian authors and I realized that they always talk about you as, um, let's say, uh, being a role model for them. Um, what do you think about that? Um, how it is to be a role model for young Ukrainian authors? Uh, I'm surprised uh, by your question because I never met such opinions uh, made by uh, young writers. Uh, and how can I comment it? Um, so I, I would say I'm glad to, to hear about it. <laughs> um, yes, I... Mm, um, I just try to uh, to be natural in my uh, in in my uh, activities. Uh, I mean, um, to to write uh, what I love to write, to translate what I love to translate, to uh, to play something with musicians, what is interesting uh, for me. And uh, so I, I just wanted that uh, the younger people uh, who come to, to the literature, who make it uh, their, to their uh, profession, let's call it profession, main business in that life, that uh, they, they have more um, 
uh, more satisfaction uh, from that creativity than uh, from, uh, I don't know, uh, formal uh, material success uh, or such things. Um, I very regret if I uh, if I hear from somebody that uh, he or she uh, is uh, going to be a writer because uh, the writers are famous or the writers are rich and it is not the true first of all and the second thing uh, I would like um, to to uh, to meet the people who have uh, some uh, some easier uh, vision of that. It's the only uh, the only way to be uh, uh, to be yourself, uh, to be him or herself, to be myself, and. Uh, it is it is uh, maybe a position for uh, longer for the longer part of my life uh, to to be independent to be free to be uh, actually to be independent in the meaning of uh, uh, some political identity too. Uh, so actually no union, no party, uh, no, uh, uh, no part in, a, in a political life. Uh, just, uh, of course, of course, a political position uh, should be pronounced and uh, should be declared and somehow. Um, uh, consequent, uh, but uh, but it's just uh, the own choice. It is a personal aesthetic thing, more aesthetical one than political one. Uh, so it's uh, maybe some of them uh, find it uh, find uh, this. Uh, let's call it uh, this um, amount of uh, uh, of principles of uh, some values uh, maybe some of them uh, find it uh, attractive or acceptable yeah i hope so so uh we are now uh coming to the end of our conversation and as i said the last question will be since the title of our festival is Festival of Hope. Do you have hope for the future? Maybe Natalka, can you answer this question first? Um, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> it's not always easy, but I'm trying. And I will keep trying. <laughs> so. What about you, Yuri? Yes, I'm full of hope. Uh... <laughs> Uh, I'm full of hope, um, and uh, I connect it to to the literary uh, things. I uh, I'm sure I'm absolutely sure that uh, there is still a future, and <clears throat> the hope. Uh, into this future is uh, a part of, uh, of such a beautiful uh, thing as uh, literature. So I, I mean, uh, as long as, as uh, the people uh, have uh, this uh, internal uh, need uh, to tell the stories, to write them, uh, to read them, and to communicate uh, with each other uh, by uh, texts, by books, uh, uh, 
there, there still is a future and uh, it is very, very, very bright. I think we can finish with this very beautiful thought. I would like to uh, thank to you uh, for this pleasant conversation. And I hope that we will meet one day also in personal. Yes. Thank, thank you. you very much. <laughs>